Hi, and welcome along to this next video in our Kubernetes Security Fundamentals series. In the last video, we started looking at the various APIs that Kubernetes has and presents, and some of the security considerations you might have with those. In the last video, we looked at etcd, and today we're going to move on and look at the main Kube AC API Server API. So just to remind you of what these look like, um, what we can see here is all the different APIs and services and ports that a standard kubeadm Kubernetes cluster will start. So we looked at etcd last time, which listens on 2379, 2380, and 2381. And today we're going to move on and take a look at the Kubernetes API server. Now here we've got this listed on the diagram as port 6443, which is the default standard port for the kubeadm distribution of Kubernetes. However, some distributions will listen on other ports, notably 443, which is standard for the main managed Kubernetes distributions, and then some others will also listen on 8443, but, but typically one of those different options, ultimately though it can be a variety, depending on the distribution. So um, the main API server is of course the entry point for most people's interactions with a cluster. And as a result, it is probably the most important port from a security standpoint because if people can get a lot of unauthorized access to this, they're likely to be able to escalate their privileges inside a cluster. It's also generally the port that might be exposed on the internet. So the main managed distributions all put the API server available directly on the internet by default. So it means it's a common port of call for attackers. So what we're gonna to do today is take a little bit of a look at how this presents itself from an unauthenticated standpoint and some of the things that it's good to know about that. So let's go to a demo. So we've got our standard kubeadm cluster here running in kind. Um, and we have got, if we look at our ports, minus LTMP, uh, we can see we've got our 6443, which is the Kube API server. So we can see that says listing on all interfaces on 6443. Now, this is an HTTPS uh, service. And one of the interesting things that there is to know about this is that the Kubernetes API server has quite distinctive fingerprints in its certificate names, uh, which means that if you come across uh, an HTTP service that you think might be a Kubernetes API server, you can very often identify it based on those names. Uh, if I show you an example here, we've got a little open SSL command, and what this is going to do is it's going to connect to the API server and give us the subject alternative names field from the certificates. And we hit enter, what you'll see here is we've got things like kubernetes.default, kubernetes default service, kubernetes default service cluster local. These are obviously fairly distinctive names. They're not going to be used by most ordinary services, but they're extremely common defaults in Kubernetes because they're used as part of name service resolution inside the cluster. So if you're ever connecting to a server and you want to identify it, this is a pretty reliable way of doing it. So we've got our, um, our API server listing on 6443. Uh, and the first thing we might want to do is interact it with curl. So we can do curl minus k https 127.0.0.16443. And on the root, what we'll get back is we get back a forbidden 403 error. Now, this is actually quite interesting because what it's actually telling us is that we have actually got authenticated access to the cluster. We're authenticated as the system anonymous user, but we are forbidden in the system anonymous user is not allowed to get the root URL. So what is happening here is that Kubernetes has a flag called anonymous auth, and the anonymous auth flag is typically set to true. This means that anyone who tries to contact the API server without providing credentials will be assigned the identity system anonymous. And this is by design in most clusters. Not every cluster will do that. If you get a 401 response back from a Kubernetes uh, API server when you request the root, that typically means that anonymous auth is set to no. A good example of this is a zero Kubernetes service, which doesn't set anonymous, anonymous auth to true. So typically that is the level of access. That's also a very good, obvious kind of like tell point that you've hit a Kubernetes API server. There are, however, a couple of other pieces of information which are often available without authentication. So for example, if we ran this and then we went for the slash version endpoint, this potentially provides us some more information. And in fact, it provides us the precise version number we're running. 
So in this case, we're running Kubernetes v 1.27.3. Um, this is part of, um, again, Kubernetes common defaults, is to provide access to certain endpoints on the API server to any unauthenticated caller. And probably the most important of these is this version information, as it basically tells you exactly what version is running. Now, from an attacker standpoint, this could be useful uh, if they are looking for specific versions because they think they might have an exploit that applies to certain versions of Kubernetes and not others. Um, and you can also tell how well people are doing their patching um, because you can see if they're still in support uh, depending on the version number that they are displaying. This again is a common default. It's not necessarily the case in every Kubernetes distribution. And this is done essentially by providing rights to these paths to that system anonymous identity. So most clusters will provide a certain level of access to that. Um, but you can't get a lot more information by default out of a Kubernetes cluster. It is possible, of course, to misconfigure the cluster, at which point you'll be able to get more additional information. That is typically all you should be able to get out of a Kubernetes API server. On very old clusters, you might find another port which serves the same information, which was called the insecure API port. Um, this hasn't been available for some versions, but used to be in, in, in older versions a couple of years ago. This typically listened on port 80, 80, and anyone who connected to it got full cluster admin access. So understandably, not a good secure configuration. So that's a little bit about how the API server works and what is visible or by default on the internet, and a little bit about how you might be able to identify a Kubernetes API server if you come across one. In the next video, what we'll be doing is carrying on and looking at other ports that the Kubernetes makes available and some of their characteristics and features. We've, as always, got more information on our Security Labs website, so you can go and read the blog there. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.